Hello, and welcome to another brief update from Toby's Fun for Reproductive Health Equity. I'm Barbara Levin. I got a lot of reactions from my last podcast. It was my ravings on the incredible tragedy that is the state of the United States since the bigots have been unleashed in the guise of the Republican Party and are currently unfiltered in their misogynistic thirst to punish the most vulnerable. Yes, I know, they're victims too. They worry that their concept of a world of powerful white men has been displaced by others who have the audacity to live here too. They wish and need to take us back to a time that was good for one sector of society alone, white Christian men. They have their supporters amongst the others, a few black men, Clarence Thomas, and a few blinkered women, Amy Comey Barrett, who are salivating at the concept of a society that punishes the pregnant, who for almost 50 years have not had to worry as much that their choice to have control over their own body will be honored. The conservative majority on the U.S. Supreme Court, which includes the two sexual predators currently serving, are thrilled that finally they can enforce false hope that if they just take away a person's right to choose their own destiny, that it will save the world miraculously. It makes no sense, and I can't even get started on the hypocrisy. Apparently, we are ruled by leaders who have the power to dictate their own morals, however skewed towards 1950 it is, that disregards the needs of people who get pregnant. Have any of these people in power asked those who will be affected by abortion bans if they can live less this way? Have any of the people in power made any effort to, re to reverse any rights white men have accomplished in the past 70 years? I think not. White man Greg Abbott, who mysteriously to me is the governor of Texas, says that the way he will deal with the suffering he has imposed by signing SB 8, which strictly limits abortion rights, even for those who have been raped by whomever, is that he will not let anyone be raped. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Years ago, when there was a wave of rapes sweeping Israel, one of the male cabinet members suggested women should be put under curfew until the rapists were caught. The prime minister at the time, Golda Meir, famously shot back, men are committing the rapes, let them be put under curfew. I might note that Golda Meir was the last female prime minister Israel has ever had. Does anyone responsible for ripping away abortion rights consult any of the hundreds of thousands who object to this action? The 75% of people in the U.S. who support Roe v. Wade, the protesters in every major city of every state who implore others to get the bans off our bodies. Are people like Greg Abbott, Clarence Thomas, and the conservative church leaders and Brett Kavanaugh too busy stopping rape to ask the question? This is madness. And I don't even know how the hypocrisy will end. The best thing I ever heard on the subject was once on a news program when the moderator asked a male commentator his opinion on Roe v. Wade. He thought for a second and said, I've learned that as a man who can't get pregnant, I should just keep my mouth shut. Can they all? If you don't want an abortion, don't have one. You've always had that choice. More on this, I suspect. We're far from done. Thank you for listening.